So here we have the equation for the Herfindahl index, and it's, I mean, if we had to put this in words, we would simply say that we're going to sum something. So we see the summation sign. What are we going to sum? We're going to sum the square values of the market shares of all the companies in the industry. So we see MS squared. In, make sure you square and then sum and that you never sum and then square. So always square and then sum. And what do we have here? We have from the first company to the nth company. So we're going to square all the companies from the first to the nth. And how are we going to define N? We're going to define N as any firm with uh, uh, greater than or equal to 1% market share. Why? Well, if we have a company that has an absolutely tiny market share, say they have one one hundred thousandth of the market, so 0. .00001 or whatever the number is, it's an irrelevant company in the index because when we square that number, it's even going to get much smaller. And so when we have a lot of tiny firms, it doesn't really matter if we square them and include them or not include them. And so what we do is we don't include them. So if we had a, a home building, for example, 35,000 companies, only 12 of which meet this threshold of 1% or more. You could figure out the Herfindahl of an industry with 35,000 firms with just the information from those 12 firms. Okay? So it's very important. Students often mistake N in a Herfindahl index. They think it's either 4 or 8, like the concentration ratios. It is not. You can have more firms in a, in a Herfindahl uh, index calculation.